The first Wasteland was released all the way back in 1988. A gritty, post-apocalyptic RPG that was truly innovative for its time and maintains a cult following to this day. Due to licensing issues, Interplay went on to create Fallout 1 as a spiritual successor to Wasteland. Interplay would later sell Fallout's rights to Bethesda, and it seems like that's where this story should have ended. However, in an unlikely, wonderful turn of events, Brian Fargo founded a new development team, reacquired the rights to Wasteland from Konami, and finally released an awesome sequel in 2014. Now, over 30 years after the first game's release, we have Wasteland 3. So how does it stack up to its predecessors? Wasteland 3 is set 20 years after the events of Wasteland 2, and the Desert Ranger's home state of Arizona is dying. Short on resources and in dire straits, the Rangers strike a deal with the Patriarch, the self-proclaimed ruler of Colorado, who maintains control through propaganda and violence. In exchange for supplies, he wants his three rebellious children captured, each of whom is plotting against him in their own way. The premise is simple, but not everything is as it seems. The game opens with your team being ambushed and mostly murdered by a group of pissed off inbred hellbillies in an attack that takes place in a great full motion video. Almost right away, you're swept into the world's defining blend of dark realism and black humor. Around the next corner, you never know if to expect a disturbing act of violence, or if you'll be fighting Santa Claus for exploiting his elf workers. Over the next 60 plus hours, you'll explore and fight your way through the frozen waste of Colorado and ultimately decide its fate. The writing is excellent, as is the voice acting, and the two set it apart from the vast majority of RPGs. In Exile went all out with the characters, from crime bosses to cannibals, slavers, cybernetically enhanced raiders, and even an AI version of Ronald Reagan. Some of the critical NPCs have the cinematic dialogue sequences, and it's used sparingly enough that it makes their scenes more powerful. The writing quality also extends to the branching player dialogue. Non-combat skills like nerdy stuff, hard ass, kiss ass, and first aid, your reputation, and your choices constantly unlock new dialogue options and quest solutions. At every turn, you're given more choices to make and those decisions have rippling effects that often play out in unexpected ways. At one point, I left a settlement after starting a quest, and as a result of leaving, the townspeople were slaughtered by a cult of clowns that fight with pigs strapped up in dynamite. Near the end of the game, I made a decision that made not one, but two of my party members leave the group simultaneously. Brutal, but so few games have such meaningful consequences. Along with a lengthy main quest line, there's also a large number of well-crafted side quests that sometimes steal the show. These range from helping a group of cannibals track down escaped prisoners, to breaking up a party of teenagers who are making too much noise. The skill system has been heavily streamlined, and many of the skills from Wasteland 2 have been consolidated for the sake of simplicity. Reaching certain skill thresholds unlock new perks, which allow for further character specialization. There is also quirks, optional traits that give characters a positive and negative effect permanently. The perk system could have benefited from a wider variety of options and depth, but character creation is undoubtedly an improvement over previous entries. Until now, combat in the Wasteland series has been clunky at best, but it's much better here thankfully. Encounters are short affairs, typically only lasting a few minutes at most. Combat areas are filled with various forms of cover for you and your enemies to utilize, as well as environmental hazards like explosive barrels. 
Some locations could have used a bit more polish, as cover is sometimes seemingly placed at random, but they're generally well designed. Weapon skills are broken up into automatic weapons, small arms, sniper rifles, big guns, explosives, melee, and brawling. You're somewhat forced to use a group of specialists in each discipline, as ammunition is often scarce. Successful attacks build up special abilities that often turn the tide of battles, dealing huge amounts of damage, hitting multiple targets, destroying armor, or inflicting status effects. Along with a wide array of attacks at your disposal, you have the option to defend, set up ambushes that act like the Overwatch ability in XCOM, or save action points for the following turn. Skills like mechanics allow the player to set up deployable turrets that attack enemies or heal your squad. Weird Science allows the use of special weapons that apply status effects like frozen, shocked, or even shrink enemies. There's an animal companion system, and you can choose from a wide range of different companions, each with their own benefit to the player, including everything from a cat named after a David Bowie song to cyborg chickens. You can even clone yourself and use it as cannon fodder. While the combat isn't as masterful as XCOM, it's still a fun ride. Between missions, you travel across the world map in the Kodiak, an armored all-terrain vehicle that can be upgraded with different horn sounds, armor, and weapons. Certain upgrades increase the vehicle's resistance to radiation, allowing you to travel into previously deadly areas of the map. Mercifully, you can upgrade the Kodiak's travel speed as there's no fast travel system. It is possible to be towed back to Ranger HQ, but you can't fast travel to other areas, and given the size of the map, this option would be a welcome addition. This is made even worse by long, relatively frequent loading screens and random battles. The Kodiak is used in some special encounters that give off a definite Mad Max vibe. Mark Morgan, the composer of the soundtracks of Fault 1 and 2 and Wasteland 2, returned for Wasteland 3. His stellar work on classic Fallout remains as some of the best ambient music in any game I've ever played, and I'm happy to say he killed it for Wasteland 3. Most game soundtracks are good filler at best, but this is inspired. Even if you're not going to play the game, I'd recommend the soundtrack because there's some fucking jams. Finally, Wasteland 3 is buggy. I had to reload multiple saves due to glitches, and had one side quest break entirely since I didn't want to lose hours of progress. Sometimes my shots would be blocked by objects, even though there was nothing in the way. In other cases, enemies could melee attack from long distances or shoot through walls. During the final conversation of the game, the camera didn't pan, and I was left staring at a concrete wall and dialogue boxes. Given the scale of the game, bugs are to be expected to an extent, but it's also one of the few flaws that holds Wasteland 3 back. Apparently the console ports have even more issues, but hopefully this will be patched out in the coming months. Bugs aside, I'm happy to say that Wasteland 3 has refined and streamlined the strengths of previous titles into one of the best turn-based isometric games ever made. Combat is fun, your choices matter, the writing is superb, and there aren't many RPGs of this quality that are so accessible. Wasteland may never move out of Fall Shadow, but it's never shine brighter. I give it 4 out of 5 rads. If you're a fan of classic Fallout or RPGs in general, do yourself a favor and check it out.